All right, so what's good now is that we're done with the majority of the minimum components required to set up body tracking. What's missing is that we don't have interactivity. So right now we're not able to interact with anything in the scene with our hands. So the next blueprint that we need to make is basically like a 3D mouse cursor, but using your hands. So as usual, we right click to create a new class, actor, let's call this one BP 3D cursor one. Let's enter this. We're not gonna be using this default scene route. Replace it with a sphere. It's called the uh, hit point. You'll see in a moment. I'm gonna scale it down to like 0.15. Let's change it to something bright. There should be one called hue shift instance. Yeah, that's fine. Drop it on top and compile and save this. Okay, that should be okay. Now here, get rid of this. What we first need to do is this is gonna be the mouse and it needs to track the position of our hands, either if it's left or right. And we're gonna be using that using the function called attach actor to component. And we need to do that actually in the body track interface. We need to create a new function. So let's create a new function. So attach cursor to hand, just attach cursor is fine. We need to get one input, yeah. So it's going to be of type BP 3D cursor, object reference. So type in cursor. And the node I was talking about is called attach actor to component. So the target is going to be there. And then the parent, I think what we'll do is attach cursor to hand L or hand R. And then in case we can just duplicate it later, but anyways, yeah. So we take the right hand for this one and that should be enough. Let's duplicate this, turn this into the left hand, but now we swap it with the left hand, just like that. And that should be okay. Yeah. Let's compile and save this. Now for event begin play, let's do right ha hand or question mark, expose it in the level. So if, if it's the right hand true, let's default it to true. So compile and give it true. We're going to take a reference to this. So we need a reference first. So body track interface. Let's also expose that on a track interface object reference. We're going to attach itself. So attach hand R. Attach itself to one of the hands. So we get reference to self. Otherwise we will attach to the left hand. like this, also self. Actually, we can just do that here. Move this down. Yeah, so that works. We can compile and save that. Now, because of this, the cursor will follow the position of the hand. Okay, after we do that, we need to basically do a line trace, which you should be used to if you've taken any of my previous courses, that requires a mouse input, but instead we're not gonna be using the mouse, but the positions of our hands. So that's going to be in the event tick. So let's go here and then we will do a line trace for objects. Okay, and for the start and end points, we will take basically the actor's position. So get actor position, location. That's going to be our start point. Now for the end point, we will create some new variables. So that's going to be the trace direction. Let's expose it. It's going to be a vector. 
Now for us, ignore that, we need to trace towards the positive x, so we will default it to 1 in the x. Okay, let's take this. We need to also have a scalar, so do trace distance, which is going to be of type float. Expose it. Okay, now we're going to multiply the direction with the distance, and we add that vector with the start point, which gives us the end point. There you go. Okay, and the reason why it's not allowing us to compile is that we haven't specified a type. So now do make array. And what I'll introduce here is something that will be new to most of you. And it's that we're going to be creating a new object type, which actually I have created, but we're going to make it again. And so let's just compile and save for now. All right, so collisions in Unreal Engine, it's a topic that's actually quite hard to understand. And for me, it was actually one of the last things that I understood fully. And to be able to really take full advantage of the customizability of collisions in Unreal Engine. And so long story short, to demonstrate, I'll click on the hit point here and go down into collisions here. So of course, in Unreal Engine, you have different object types. So let's click on custom. We have things like world static, world dynamic, pawn, physics body. And these types allow us to modify the collision response in between different object types, right? So your object type could be physics body, but then you only want to interact with other world dynamic objects or statics, right? Or just only world dynamics. So if you have, let's just say, some physics body floating around, but you only want it to collide with the world dynamic, in that case, you select that. But maybe you want the world static at least to respond with overlap because you have some kind of overlap logic, then you have that selected, right? And so that's how it works. And it gives you the ability to sort of like separate collisions for different types, and it's extremely useful. Okay, so you might still not understand exactly what I'm talking about, and I'm actually also struggling to explain it with words, although I understand it in my head. So basically, the point of creating a new object type is that when we use a line trace, we can ignore all the meshes, everything that we have in the scene, but only line trace for objects that is of type trace hit, which we're gonna make. And so this will be used as an interactivity zone, like a safe zone, where if your hands are over that area, your interactivity works. But if you leave that area, your hand will be disabled. And that's what we will do. Okay, so basically, this was for demonstration purposes only. So we're going to set this to not, no collision. We don't need overlap events. Okay. And also, what I made a mistake here is that this is going to be needing two things. So I'm going to add in scene here. So we do actually need a root. So let's do root. Okay. And that's going to be fine. Okay, what's going on here? Hit point. There you go. So because here, look. We need to basically move the root based on the hand position, but the hit point we need to move based on the hit location. So that's going to be here. So let's break this. And we're going to get the location here. We're going to set its world location. Okay, and then we do this. And then we take the location. All right, so we can place it down here. And I would also say we're probably going to be using this here. So take this. So if it's true, we do this. If it's not, we're going to do something else later. Okay, so let's go ahead and create the new object type. So it's going to be in project settings. Go down to collision. 
Now, I actually already created it, but I can delete it for you. Okay, so what we'll do is we will create a new object channel, call it trace hit. It's going to be a block response, except, and so if you do this and you go in here and re recompile, you'll see it down in the list here, and we will look for trace hit. We get the trace hit, we change the position. If not, we will basically, what we'll do is we'll take this, and we will set its relative scale to zero. Okay, and if it's overlapping, we will set it back to 0.15. And we don't have to be triggering it every single time, so we can do a do once, which I think it's O click. Okay, we can't do that. Do once. Do once, and that gets reset here. So I'm just going to move this over. Okay, and that should be it. Let's do a bit of cleanup here. Something like this. And, okay, come on. I think that's looking fine. No, that was unnecessary, but yeah, that is looking fine. Great, okay. So we can compile this, make sure everything's good. Yep. Now to test this out, we need to create that zone I was talking about, and that's going to be a plane. So let's drop in a plane. Let's rotate it 90 degrees and Y. And then I think that should be fine, 200. I'm gonna move it up around 180. Okay, and then I'll scale up to five. Okay, that's qu quite a lot bigger than I thought. So, okay, let's do 250 maybe. I want to see some shadows here. Okay, that's fine. And then let's get our camera. And then let's move ourselves somewhere to the same level. Move this back more. So where are we at? Somewhere here. So 280. It's called minus 3000. And okay, so the body tracking interface, let's move this up to like 100. And I'm going to increase the tracking scale to 200. And that should be about good, I think. Maybe up here. Okay, and now for the zone, basically what happens is that if your hands are moving within the space, it'll be interactive. If you leave the space, the line trace will be basically not working, and so the interaction will be stopped. Okay, so let's rename this. First, floor. This one here is the trace hit plane and let's get rid of the sphere we don't need that right now and the trace hit plane let's yeah it's fine and then of course the physics this is the special part so of course we need to go down into advanced nope that's not it here we go yeah collision preset we're going to give it custom we know that we want this type to be a trace hit we can basically ignore everything except for the trace response. So click on block for that. And the type of query is going to be, I think, query only. Because we only need, yeah, raycast. So that's fine. And we should be okay. No overlapped events. That's fine. Yep, that's all good. We can just save that. And then if we open up Touch Designer, and let's run this. And run this. Actually, before we run this, we need to attach our camera. So click on the camera in the level. Go into the level blueprint. Get a reference to the camera. Get the player controller. 
and then set its view target with blend. Connect that up, get rid of that one there. And we're just going to connect this here. Okay, there you go. Save that, compile, save. Let's drop this into here. I would say we can drop it below. No, let's just zero it out, that's fine. And we need a reference to the body tracking interface. There you go. Let's save this, run it. Okay, and let me just stand in front of the sensor, which somehow isn't working. So perhaps I haven't yet run this. So let me just do that, okay. So I move myself now. Strangely enough, it's not working. So let me just check what's going on. Okay, so I figured out what the issue was. So my bad, first of all, trace distance should not be zero because it wouldn't work. And then the second issue I found was that the scale was way too small. So go into basically your sphere here and scale it all the way to one and also change the value of this here to one as well. And so if you're ready with that, you can save all. Let's make sure that it's running and click on run. And I'll just stand in front of the sensor here. And as you can see, if I move my right hand, it will follow and then the hit location will basically be reflected. Now, in order to see what I mean by going out of the zone, let's escape this and then increase the scale of our body tracking. So instead of 200, we'll, I don't know, we'll just bump it up to 300. I think that should be okay. Okay, and let's run it once again. Okay, so I'll stand right in front here. Yeah, so you can see if I move away from the zone, the sphere will go away and you'll see basically the code that we put to the scale zero will basically come into action. And so yeah, basically you can use this tracking scale to increase how much space you can cover with your tracking. So, you know, you might have built a scene that was way bigger than real scale, then you can change that here. So I'm going to put this back to 200. and control shift s so that's the end of the free chapter one section if you like this tutorial give it a like and if you want to continue with this course visit interact.live and access the five other courses as well as exclusive project files for interactive art in unreal engine